Hey there everybody, it's the Vintage Sewing Machine Garage making a video for you today and uh, the title kind of explains uh, what I'm going to present to you today and why. Uh, any of you who've ever gone looking for vintage sewing machines, uh, if you've done so because you're a collector, maybe you're just a sewer who can't help yourself, maybe you're uh, a tinkerer and a restorer like myself, uh, whatever the case may be, you may know that um, when you go looking for sewing machines, you you truly never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you will find a machine that belongs to uh, the same family of, of, as the original buyer. It's beautifully preserved. Uh, it might be uh, in the hands of a, of a descendant. Or you might get a machine from someone who's actually been sewing with it. And they can tell you all about it and have the condition. And then sometimes you just get a machine that for, you know, just for against all odds, the machine has survived. Uh, and, and you may or may not learn much of the story of this. This machine was abandoned and uh, the owner of the property found it and put it up for sale and said, well, I'm gonna sell it and if nobody comes out and gets it, they're gonna, they're gonna take it to the scrap heap. And they weren't kidding. Um, the, you know, I purchased this in an area where it's very rural, it's very hard to get people to come out and look at things. But I was on a mission to find a, a carry case that fits full-size singers, that, that being the 14 and a half inch wide singer bed width. Uh, some of the other uh, bedwood cases you have seen me uh, uh, showcase in videos are actually only about this wide because they were holding the uh, singer 99s, 99Ks typically. Uh, but this is for the full-size singers and uh, the reason I wanted it is, uh, as you guys know, I'm not a collector. I look for things because I need them. In this case, uh, I have someone who wants a machine. They want to, um, to get one of the machines I have, but they are looking for one in a case. And it's kind of curious. Half of the people that come to me for machines uh, really insist on having a table, but the other half are just as uh, adamant about not wanting a table, maybe because they have one or two or three in their house, and they want to... Um, they want to have a machine in a carry case. And so, thus, my quest for, for one of these began. I, I didn't have to have a bent wood. It could have been an even later uh, case. I just needed the right dimensions. Uh, because, again, some people are collectors and they look for certain things. This, of course, is uh, the case that Singer used for many years. They're called, I think people have different names for them, bent wood case or lunchbox case, they sometimes call them. And when you look at this, it's almost hard to believe that it has survived as long as it has, right? There's, a little, there's some varnish loss here along the base. Let me push, push this down so you can actually see what I'm talking about, right? A little of the restore finish will be helpful here. And I'll show you the inside and I, <clears throat> I'll show you why I, I feel great that I rescued this piece and it could have been worse. The first thing I noticed was that the person who was selling it got it and didn't have a way to open the case. And so what did they do? They took a screwdriver and went into the lock mechanism. And they opened it and they got the lid off. And when they did, lo and behold, well, let's see if I can get my end off of here. Here she comes. Of course, many of you who know singers will know that this is a Singer 15, 15-90. It has the, it uses a belt and it has a motor on the back. Uh, you guys, you know, and again, I saw this, I mainly needed it for the case, but uh, Singer 15s are right up there with Singer 201s in terms of the model that I have restored the most. They are, they are just, you know, the salt of the earth, tried and true iron size machine, and, and I will uh, restore this machine and find a new home for it. Uh, and first I'll show you what it came with and what it did not come with. It came with a box of uh, vintage attachments and none of these are particularly unusual. Uh, here's the slotted binder foot. Many of you get these. It has the Singer screwdriver. What else have we got? Uh, adjustable hammer foot with uh, some rust stains and I'll talk more about What's so weird about this machine and its rust? Here is a tucker foot, which also has some rust here. 
Oh, and it has a rolled hammer foot, even with a little bit of uh, rust deep down in the groove there. None of this particularly bothers me, but what's curious is where rust is and is not on this machine. It's really weird. Uh, oh, what else came in here? Of course, I had a, a ruffler foot, a little bit of corrosion on it. Um, what else is in here? And a very ancient uh, Singer tube of grease. I mean, this is old grease, guys. Uh, ooh. Um, and then a, a more recent, uh, you know, spool of thread. Uh, I, I, the reason I even bothered to show you these attachments, though, is because the machine has a strange history I'm trying to, to sort of piece together. Now, I noticed in the photo that it was missing its bobbin plate, so I went looking, and here it is. It's actually down in the bottom of the machine. The plate above has, you know, it's dirty. It's got like a rust spot here and some rust underneath. Uh, I have found typically that when a sewing machine gets oxidation and rust because it's been sitting in a damp environment, usually in a basement or an outdoor garage, and you know it's sitting on the ground, people, uh, it's amazing what people don't do to take care of their stuff. Um, and I'm, I'm very confident that the original owner didn't do that to this machine. Uh, these machines were crazy expensive. You guys hear me say that a lot because uh, it's easy to forget uh, even what household items used to cost our ancestors. But <clears throat> anyway, it has a seam guide, and the seam guide is uh, not rusted. Um, so anyway, I started poking around, taking a look at the machine, and I'm going to let you guys kind of poke around with me, and I'll show you uh, what I found so strange about it. Okay, guys, I changed the uh, angle of the camera because I wanted you to see down into the belly of this thing so it's very odd. Usually when I see oxidation on a machine, I see it all over the place. I see it here. Any part that was not painted will often have some, but I don't have any here. The machine is not bound at all. It's actually, considering it hasn't had any you know, lubrication or attention in a while, it, everything seems to be moving. Now you'll notice the bobbin case here. I'm going to pull that out. The bobbin case and even the bobbin has rust on it in a pattern that looks like something spilled on this thing. You know, when you have damp moisture in the air, things typically, if they're gonna oxidize, they typically do it in a more slightly even fashion. But this, I don't know, I can't tell if somebody dripped stuff on this or what. Uh, all of these parts I'm not worried about. This is a Singer 15. If I have to replace parts, I will. What I probably will do is take the parts, take them apart, and I'll probably go through a rust removal process. I'm, that's probably another video idea. But let's see if you guys can see the strange pattern. You see the thumb screw that holds this piece on here? The Singer 15s, not so much the clones, have this, uh, there's like a bracket that, that holds everything in place, your little shuttle hook. This right around here is rusted. And then if I turn this, I don't know if this is going to show up or not. The part of the shuttle has a little rust. It's not heavy corrosion or pitting. It's just like surface. And, uh, and I can see a little bit on the race. I don't think it's going to show up for you guys, but I see it there. And, you know, it's really odd. It, I, I, I can only guess that somebody spilled something in certain places or they squirted something they shouldn't have. Um, so here, for example, there's like a little area of rust right there where some kind of moisture had to have settled. Now, uh, we're not done yet with the, with the weird life this machine had. I'm going to show you guys what I saw on the inside of the case. Now the bent wood, the top, is in largely in great condition. Uh, I'm surprised it even exists, the way this machine must have been treated. Now, for those of you who have never seen these, uh, the, the wooden cases uh, will normally have corner blocking. Many of you know with furniture, they'll put like a, a corner reinforcing block. This one was floating around inside. This is where the machine is supposed to rest on this particular one. And there's another one. And <clears throat> I'll move the camera again for you guys. There, that's a better angle. So this is what I saw when I opened this up. I went to see the machine. Now, these blocks 
have been here since, I'm going to look up the serial number and I'll find out just how old this model is. I'm going to guess late 40s, early 50s. But of course, the machine needs to, uh, the bed rests on here. And I can only guess that this was at some point, because it's heavy, somebody dropped it um, onto the floor or onto something. And remember how darn heavy these machines are, right? This is like having a bowling ball in a box and you drop the box. Fortunately, the case did not split. That's how well they were made, I, you know, plus a little bit of luck here. So I'll be cleaning this out. I'm gonna be uh, using uh, wood glue. I'll, be, I'll reattach these very important uh, pieces. These blocks do two things. They, they provide support for the machine, and at the same time, they reinforce the corner pieces. And again, I think wood glue and some clamps are gonna take care of that. And I'm really lucky, because sometimes, uh, you know, I bought one of, one of the few machines I've ever bought on the internet. Uh, it was in a Bentwood case, and the people who shipped it didn't know how to pack it, and I ended up with a very smashed to smithereens wooden case. And that really can, that can really break your heart when you've been waiting for it to come. Okay, anything else odd about this machine? Yes, let's take a look here. Okay, guys, I'm doing a little bit of an aerial shot here. I want you to see, um, this of course is the Singer BU motor, been around forever. Um, and somebody tried to do something, some kind of servicing here, because there's a piece that screws in that covers this, uh, this little brass piece is the housing for the, one of the motor brushes. And that piece is missing, and it was not with the machine. And all I can assume is somebody went tinkering trying to fix something. Um, and so I'm going to need to take this motor apart to kind of, I want to inspect it and look at it, right? I don't, and I haven't plugged this in. I'm not even worried about plugging it in. Uh, I've got, it looks like, here is the foot pedal, the Singer button style. And it's got two colors of cord, so at some point it was probably uh, rewired, and that's, that's fine. I, I'll need to test that, of course. But <clears throat> it's just an odd, uh, an odd duck as far as, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of machines. I've seen machines that were in uh, great, gorgeous condition. I mean, they look brand new, and I've seen machines that were really doggy and had a rough life, at least aesthetically. But <clears throat> this machine has got me puzzled a bit. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, you know, why it's not worse off or what actually happened to it. So I thought I would kind of end this video with kind of where I started, and that had to do with the fact that the person who, who found it uh, tried to basically break into it by using a screwdriver. And if you've ever read on the internet about these uh, Singer cases, you may know that it's very, uh, you can really damage those locks if you're not careful. So what I did was I purchased the machine. I, I loaded it up with the machine sitting in the case base. And I did not, of course, try to put this back on. This, of course, being the, uh, the, the Bentwood piece that's thankfully intact. It's got all of its corner dowel, not dowel, corner uh, blocks reinforcing. And uh, they are mostly in good shape. I'll go behind here. I may have to add a little wood glue. But these are, these, I'm lucky, considering the life this machine has led, I'm lucky that this thing even exists. I'm talking about this thing being the Bentwood top. Now, take a look. Um, I went, I have a Singer key, right? I have a spare key. And so I, when this lock was in the base, and you can see where I pulled it out here, I, uh, it was very stiff, even with a key. I don't know how the guy did it with the, uh, uh, with the, uh, screwdriver without breaking it. So what I did was I just took sewing machine oil. I didn't even need penetrant really. And what I did was, if you look at the, the lock on the key, it looks sort of like this, right? Kind of an oval shape on the side. This is the side that faces uh, outside where you would be putting the key in. The other side is round. So I took the key and I, after I lubricated, I put sewing machine oil in the top and in the bottom, and if I can get out of my own way here, I'll show you. Uh, when I insert, when I insert the key, see if I can do it this way. Here we go. If I insert the key and I turn it, right? If I turn it right, it unlocks it. Okay. Watch the little pieces down here. See how they uh, 
If you, if you look right here, watch when I'm turning the key. And then if I turn it to the left, it locks it. So anytime you put one of these bent wood tops onto your base, a lot of people do this. Either they're not familiar with the machine and they actually hurt the base and the lock. If you want to avoid that, always be sure that the lock, you've t this has been turned to the right, and you know these two little halves, these two little sleeves, if you will, they've actually joined and lined up, right? And then this piece drops into this end right here. <clears throat> I think I've got the right in there. Sorry, this end. <laughs> Uh, if you don't know which way, the front of the machine, the, uh, the bentwood top will have Singer on one side. Okay, It'll have the Singer name on one side. And that's just a quick reference for you when you're trying to figure out which way is up or which way is right. Uh, so, uh, on this end, right, when, when you've got the, the lock unlocked and these two sleeves are together, they look like you know, they've, been, they've slid so that they're lined up together, you can put your bentwood case down into the, to the slot. And then, when you're ready to lock it, you just, you just turn the key to the left, and there you go. And that holds it in. The purpose of these locks, by the way, was not to, uh, it wasn't like you were going to prevent theft. It was mostly to keep children from messing with the machine. That's something they wanted to, to do. Uh, when I, uh, now that I've gotten the, the lock working again, uh, I'll be putting it back in and it actually will fit in just like that. And then I have two screws that uh, will hold it back in. I always hesitate to take anything out of wood if I don't have to. So I'm hoping that when these screws go in, there's still enough wood to grab hold of them and keep everything in place. But with this lock lubricated, uh, if yours is ever st stubborn, don't forget, so much of vintage uh, products were metal on metal like this lock. Uh, you know, more than your sewing machine needs to be oil sometimes. So I thought that would be, uh, be kind of an interesting thing to show you guys. I've never really talked about the locks on these. And again, uh, once it's in there, it'll be fine. It'll be functioning. And I will decide, the first thing I'm going to do is take care of the repairs to the case. And then I'll put some restore finish on it and make it look, make it look beautiful again. And then <clears throat> this... Singer, this 1590, 15-90, will end up uh, probably in a Singer table. Uh, again, it just depends on what the client and the customer wants. But uh, anyway, I just wanted to show you all, uh, you never know when it comes to getting a sewing machine. But if you get one and you get it home and, you know, you're in someone's house and you don't know them and you, you have to kind of make a decision quickly sometimes, that's kind of a shame. If you get home and you see this, don't despair. It's okay. You have it totally screwed up. Uh, and if the machine is frozen, it can be unfrozen. Straight stitch singers, while I've had a few that were stuck and frozen, uh, they are the least likely to be. Um, I have found very few of them to be frozen when I've gotten a hold of them. But uh, as all of you probably know by now, I think any machine is worth an attempt to save. When you're dealing with an heirloom quality device, they literally don't make them like this anymore. Uh, and as I've heard other people say, um, if you are looking for a home, you know, a domestic sewing machine, uh, and you want one of this quality, you, you have to buy vintage because new ones aren't made that way anymore. Uh, I'm, I can't speak to the industrials, uh, whether, the old, whether the new industrials are built to the same standard as the old, some people say they're not. But I think a lot of us know if you've ever had a plastic sewing machine, uh, you know, anything modern, you know that it has a certain lifespan. And this, this old girl is heirloom quality. When, when the overhaul is complete, this machine is going to be ready for a, a life of service. So uh, I can tell that the tension knob is stiff. I'm going to have to disassemble that and clean it. But that's okay. You know, this thing's 70 plus years old. I think it deserves a service. Uh, it's probably overdue for one. But... Anyway, thanks for watching, folks. I try to make videos like this because um, sometimes things that are uh, presented on YouTube is if everything's easy and, you know, you're not going to have any surprises. Well, that's not true. 
but I, I want you guys to see me after nine years of doing this. I get surprised sometimes, but I knew I wanted that case. And uh, a little bit of this, like I say, this little rust stains, that doesn't scare me. You guys have seen the different methods I use. Use a little polish and test everything. And this machine will live to fight another day or live to make clothing another day. Thanks for watching, everyone.